Hello and welcome to Geology Concepts. This is the first part of month of August current affairs where we will be covering topics from polity, governance, international relations and economy. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first update is on Uniform Civil Code. So recently the Uniform Civil Code is has been making news a lot lately and uh, we need to understand what it uh, really means, what the Uniform Civil Code means and what are the provisions that are there for Uniform Civil Code in our constitution and in our law, right? So let's first understand what, what is the definition of a Uniform Civil Code. So a Uniform Civil Code refers to a unitary system of personal laws which are related to mostly marriage, divorce, maintenance, inheritance, adoption and succession of property, right? And it will be applicable to all the religions irrespective of uh, the religious affiliation, it will be applicable to all, right? Now the question is, why do we need a uniform civil code in India, right? If you see the article 44 of the constitution of directive principle of state policy says that, uh, it mandates that the state shall endeavor to secure a uniform civil code for all its citizens. So, uh, for the government, it is the constitutional duty to be fulfilled, right? And it will also advance uh, government initiative in gender justice, national integration and equality that is ancient in our uh, constitution through article 14. Now implementing a UCC would also uphold the principle of secular state that India is, right? India's preamble uh, says that India is a secular state. So this will also uphold the principle of secular state where religious beliefs do not dictate the civil matters, isn't it? Now also it will help in realizing the needs of a contemporary Indian society, right? Now the laws and practices uh, which are de divisive in nature and which, which are dividing the nation based on the religion or hindering the social integration and progress, they must be abolished, isn't it? For example, the polygamy law, which, are, which is uh, uh, legal as per the Muslim uh, personal law, which is the Sharia law, Sharia Application Act. It, 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 allows, um, uh, it allows polygamy. But it, if you see, it is uh, against women empowerment and gender justice. So this kind of laws should be abolished, isn't it? Now also, it, uh, implementing a uniform civil code in India will also ensure that India is in line with United Nations Human Rights Convention and it is ensuring that human rights are um, um, human rights in terms of civil matters are applicable to all equally. And it will also help in simplification of laws, right? A standardized procedure in personal matters and in uh, related to properties will uh, lead to faster and more efficient resolution of disputes and will promote a um, uniform economic environment in India. Also will enhance the ease of doing business in terms of India's context, right? Also, if you see the current status, now what is the current status of UCC? Now, at present, uh, most of the Indians are governed by uh, their respective religious laws in personal matters such as the marriage and inheritance and maintenance and all, right? In Goa, a um, form of uh, common civil code is in practice which is in line with the Portuguese civil code of 1867 and recently in 2024, September, Uttarakhand adopted UCC, right? And also if you see Supreme Court judgments, in many instances like uh, Saha Banu Begum case, in Sarla Mudgal case, in Saira Banu case, Supreme Court had uphold the, uh, uh, the validity of UCC and advocated for implementing UCC in India's context. Right? So that is all that you need to know as far as the Uniform Civil Code is concerned. Next, there is a scheme that is in news recently which is called PM Janman. So the Union Ministry of Tribal Affairs has launched a Information Education and Communication or IEC campaign which will target the Pradhan Mantri Janajati Adivasi Nyaya Mahayabhyan or PM Janman. Right? The main purpose of this campaign is to ensure 100% saturation of government schemes in, practic in, in particularly vulnerable tribal groups or PVTG areas. Right? So PVTGs are, uh, uh, or are called the particularly vulnerable tribal groups which are uh, mostly secluded from the rest of the civilization. Right? And this will cover at least 44 lakh individuals in over 9 194 districts across the country. And the activities in this campaign will include distribution of land entitlements, 
health camps awareness campaigns in tribal uh, languages and reaching villages gram panchayats and talukas right and the local officers uh, or the government officials at the grassroots will supervise the campaign to ensure its imp- effective implementation right now let's talk briefly about what this pm janman is all about the objective is to address the socio economic challenges that this pvtg or the particularly vulnerable tribal groups face in india right and the ministries involved in this particular schemes are total 9 ministries but the nodal ministry will be ministry of tribal affairs right and there will be 11 critical interventions that will be done for this for challenge uh, addressing the socio economic challenges that the pvtg is face right and the key components will include providing them with pakka houses connecting roads water supply mobile medical units uh, hostels vocational education anganwadi centers multi purpose centers for electrification solar grid systems solar lighting right and also there will be village development knowledge centers where tribal knowledge will be studied and disseminated within the pvtgs right and the duration of this particular scheme will be for the next 3 years and within this 3 years all these uh, uh, targets will be uh, um, completed by the government right and the beneficiary will be the 75 total pvtg communities that are there in 18 different states also including union territory of andaman and nicobar islands right and the contribution of the of other ministries if you see the ayush ministry and also the skill development ministries will also establish their uh, centers in the uh, pvtg areas and uh, ayush will facilitate mobile medical units where traditional medicinal knowledge will be um, taught to the pvtg uh, um, uh, population and also skill and vocational training will be offered to the pvtg habitation so this is all about the pm janman scheme now let's talk a, a lit, little bit about the international relations so india has been elected as the vice chair of supply chain council under the ipef or indo pacific economic framework right india along with 13 other <coughs> ipf partners uh, so there are t- total 14 partners in the ipf so india and 13 others have established three supply chain bodies which are supply chain council which is the apex body then crisis response network and labor right advisory board so india has been uh, elected as the vice chair of this particular council which is called this supply chain council now what is this ipf is uh, ipf all about so ipf was launched in to- 2022 at tokyo in japan to counter the uh, uh, to uh, promote uh, and strengthen economic engagement among the partner countries in uh, uh, the indo pacific region right as well as ensuring peace and prosperity in the region of indo pacific and there are 14 members currently including australia brunei fiji india indonesia japan korea uh, malaysia new zealand philippines singapore thailand vietnam and us right so it is it, it it has been a, a initiative that was propounded by us and other members also joined this initiative now there are four particular pillars over which this uh, ipf relies one is trade second is supply chain Uh, resilience then clean economy and another is fair economy right so india has been a signatory to pillar 2 and 4 that is supply chain and uh, uh, fair economy but it has not signed the trade uh, pillar right now because of the stringent climate policies the climate policy has been very stringent uh, as far as the trade is concerned so india has opted out of it for the time being but it 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 it, it has been uh, a part of this uh, particular tra- pillar that is the trade pillar in the capacity of an observer right so this is everything that you need to know that uh, as far as the ipf is concerned then recently an island was in news after the bangladesh uh, crisis that happened recently which is the said martins island so reports have claimed that us wanted to establish a military base in the saint martins island of bangladesh Now, what is the Saint Mary's Martins Island? It is a small coral island located in the northeastern part of the Bay of Bengal. So, it is located in Bay of Bengal, and it is also known known as the Narkel Jinjira or the Coconut Island, also sometimes called as Cinnamon Island as well. Right? In 1974, Bangladesh and Myanmar reached an agreement where the island became a part of Bangladesh territory. Right? and geopolitical significance because it is uh, located near bangladesh and myanmar it is of geopolitical significance for both india china as well as us right so they um, saint martins island is something 
that you need to understand as far as Bangladesh is concerned and it is a part of Bangladesh territory, right? Now, moving our focus to um, uh, economy, recently Digital Agriculture Mission was announced by the central government and it is conceived as an umbrella scheme to support the digital agricultural initiatives such as digital, digital uh, public infrastructure, implementing the digi digital uh, general crop estimation survey or DGCES and uh, taking up other IT initiatives by central government, state governments as well as academic and research institutions, right? Now it has uh, three main pillars. One is your agri stack. Second is your crisis decision support system or DSS. And other is soil profile maps. Right. Now what is an agri stack? Agri in, uh, it is a farmer centric digital public infrastructure which will consist of three foundational agri sector registries or database. So this is mostly a database which is farmers registry, geo referenced village maps as well as crop zone registry. Right. In the farmer's registry, every farmer will be given a digital identity or a farmer identity which will act as an Aadhaar of the farmer, right? And it will be linked dynamically to records of land, ownership of the livestock, crop shown, demographic details, family details, schemes and benefits that the farmers have availed, right? And it is currently in the pilot, uh, pilot project and uh, it has been um, implemented in several states as well. Then the crop shown registry is there where it will provide details of crops planted by the farmer, right? And the information will be recorded through digital crop surveys, which, which is a mobile based ground survey, right? And it should it will be done in every crop season. As you know, there are three crop season, Rabi, Kharif and Zed. Right? Now there will be geo referenced village maps, which will link geographic information on land records to their physical locations as well. Right? So this is the part of your agri stack where most of the things and uh, um, if you see, they are in the nature of digital registries. Now, the next uh, pillar is your Chrissy Decision Support System, which will be a comprehensive ge geospatial system that will unify remote sensing based information on crops, soil, weather and water resources. And this information will support the crop, man uh, crop map generation for identifying crop shown patterns, drought and flood monitoring, technology, and uh, technology based um, yield assessment of the crop right and also it will help the farmer to settle the crop insurance claims right so this is the part of your crisis uh, decision support system and finally you will have a soil profile map and where detailed soil profile will be made uh, over 142 million hectares of agricultural land over the uh, um, uh, period of this particular digital agriculture mission scheme right Next up, um, uh, the RBI has uh, announced that Unified Lending Interface or ULI will be designed for seamless and quick credit access, particularly for the uh, MSMEs, that is the micro, small and medium industries and farmers, which is currently in the pilot testing stage, right? ULI is currently in a pilot testing stage, but it will eventually lead to uh, seamless and quick credit access by the MSME and farmers, right? And the platform will uh, uh, will integrate diverse data sources to reduce loan appraisal time and also it will simplify the process of lending. Right. And uh, RBI thinks it has the potential to transform the uh, lending uh, ecosystem of India just, just like U UPI or uh, Unified Payment Interface uh, revolutionized the payment system in India. Right. And it also aims at standardizing and simplifying the lending process for both the lenders as well as the borrowers. Here, technologies such as advanced APIs or application programming interfaces, data integration tools and secure digital platforms are being made and tested for a unified lending interface which will uh, short, uh, which will be um, uh, implemented you know, at a large scale in the future. Right? Now, another significant news is that World Food Program and Government of Odisha jointly launched India's first 24 into 7 grain ATM in Bhubaneswar, right? This 24 into 7 gra grain ATM, which is India's first, is called Arnapurti and will be set up across Odisha in the future to provide food grains to beneficiaries with 24 and 7 access under the National Food Security Act, right? Or NFSA. So, <coughs> if you know, NFSA entitles up to 75% of the rural population and 50% of the urban population to receive subsidized food grains under public distribution scheme, right? And 
let's talk a bit about this anapurthi it is a made in india product and designed and developed by world food program india and it dispenses the type and quantity of the selected grains that are uh, uh, acknowledged by the government under pds which is wheat rice or millets right and to each beneficiary after their biometric identification so uh, a biometric after a biometric authentication any person who is entitled to give, uh, receive uh, grains under the pds scheme can also avail um the same grain amount from this anapurthi um, atm right grain atm and also it is a very energy efficient uh, machine which can be connected to solar panels for automatic refilling as well and at the 2022 world food program innovation awards it was recognized as one of the uh, world food program's top 5 innovations innovative solutions for disrupting hunger right so this grain atm um, uh, concept was also awarded in the 2022 world food program innovation award right now let's talk a bit about world food program which is a union un organization the headquarters is in rome italy and it was established in 1961 for particularly and now it is the uh, acting uh, or working towards achieving sustainable development goal agenda number 2 which is zero hunger and it is world's largest humanitarian organization which is saving lives in emergency by providing food assistance right and for its effort world food program is also awarded the nobel peace prize in 2020 and it releases two reports along with uh, food and agriculture organization or fao and unicef one is your state of food security and other is your uh, nutrition in world so these two reports are published by world food program and the last um, uh, update is on national film awards which is from the culture part so the 70th national film uh, awards for 2022 was currently announced and it highlights the significant achievements in india cinemas across various categories and marathi cinemas received notable recognitions so the best marathi film was uh, valvi which is the termite it won the best marathi film award documentary or best narration was given to murmurs of the jungle best arts or culture film was uh, awarded to varsa or legacy best biographical or historical film was awarded to anathi ek mahinjo daro okay and then uh, if you know about national film awards it was first established in 1954 and initially it was called state awards and then uh, um, uh, later it was um, converted into national film awards and since 1973 the award have been administered by directorate of film festival so the director of film festival uh, administers this award and it is given in three main categories one is your feature films then non feature films and best writing on cinema additionally the most film friendly state award is there um, is presented to a state who works significantly for the growth of the film industry as a whole in the country right So that's it for the um, uh, part one of the August current affairs. I hope you have found some useful information in this video. I will come up with the second part of uh, August current affairs where we will be discussing uh, mostly about environment, science and tech, and security portions. Until then, uh, keep revising, and I'll see you in the next one.